Despite being nearly 40 years old, the story of the brothers who broke their father and another killer out of prison has not lost any of its drama after nearly 40 years. People didn't have much good to say about Gary Tyson, except that his family was very loyal to him. At age 25, he was locked up for robbing a grocery store. When he met his wife, Dorothy, in Arizona's final county jail, he used the chance to get away. Tyson was caught and put on parole, but when he gave a false check, in 1967, and was accused of breaking his parole. Instead of going to court, he beat up the prison guard who was taking him there and killed him with his own gun. Tyson got a life sentence for murder and was sent to the Arizona State Prison in Florence. But Tyson's family came together to help. On July 30th, his 18-year-old son Ricky came to see him in prison. They talked in a fenced-in picnic area. At the same time, Raymond, who was 19 at the time, and Donald, who was 20, decided to go see their father. They brought food into the prison in a box. At check-in, one of them took a shotgun that had been cut in half out of its box and pointed it at a guard. Convicted murderer Randy Greenewalt, who was 29 years old, went with them. He had helped by cutting off phones and alarm systems. The so-called Tyson Gang Saga is a story about getting out of trouble and how they got away. In a remote part of southwestern Arizona, they killed a family, including a baby. They killed a couple who were on their honeymoon in Colorado. They made people scared all over the country, and no one knew where or when they would strike next. After escaping, the five men went on a 12-day killing spree that left six dead bodies in their wake. Gary Tyson and one of his sons were killed in a shootout with Pinal County Sheriff's deputies. One of the gang's victims was a family from Yuma, who was shot to death in their car. The bodies of Marine Sergeants John Lyons, who was 24 years old, his wife Don Elta, who was 23, and their 22-month-old son Christopher were found. In the backseat of the car, where Don Elta Lyons' body lay with her toddler son still huddled between her legs and a large, splattered blood stain. Five days later, the body of the Lyons' 15-year-old niece, Teresa Tyson, was found in a dry wash. As the biggest search for a wanted person by multiple agencies in Arizona's history got underway, the Tyson gang headed north to Colorado. When the fugitives got stuck behind a construction roadblock in southwestern Colorado, they switched cars again when they saw a van that would work for them. Two of Tyson's sons went up to the van to check out who was inside. They saw a young couple. The van was then taken over by Gary Tyson and Greenewalt in the middle of traffic. James Judge, who was 26, and Marjean Judge, who was 23 and had just gotten married, were found dead months later in southwestern Colorado. A gang spree ended early on August 11 when they and sheriff's deputies started shooting at a roadblock in a remote part of Pinal County. As the van with the men tried to get past the second of two roadblocks, the driver, 20-year-old Donald Tyson, was shot in the head and killed. The van crashed into the desert, and the rest of the people who were on the run ran away. Within minutes, Greenewalt and the Tyson brothers were caught by deputies. Gary Tyson was able to get away, but he didn't make it far. On August 22, his body was found under a Palo Verde. Tyson seems to have died in the desert sun. The Lyons family and the niece of the Lyons family were killed by Greenewalt and the Tyson brothers. All three of them were given death sentences, but the sentences for the ties were later changed to life in prison. It looks like the brothers had nothing to do with the murders. Greenewalt was sentenced to death in February 1993, but the execution was put off while his lawyers tried to prove that his confession was illegally obtained and that he hadn't had good legal help during his trial. The Arizona Supreme Court changed the date of his execution from December 23 to January 23. Even last week, the State Board of Executive Clemency said no to Greenewalt's request for a stay of execution, and even last-minute legal moves on Tuesday did not stop the execution. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals said on Tuesday that Greenewalt's request for a new hearing did not get support from a majority of the 20 judges who were still working. After a three-judge panel on Friday upheld a federal judge's decision to throw out Greenewalt's last appeal, his lawyers went to the whole court. On Tuesday, the Arizona Supreme Court also cut Greenewalt's chances of getting more time by rejecting his lawyer's claim that the state's Board of Executive Clemency did something wrong. Greenewalt's lawyer, John Bailey, left a clemency hearing on Friday because the six-member panel wouldn't listen to evidence that was meant to show that the state's clemency system has problems with bias. After listening to Greenewald's case for two hours, the board voted unanimously not to recommend clemency for him. 
this meant that he would be put to death, 